Hello and welcome back everyone, we we online and today I'm gonna continue the story what if Naruto played the game of Dumb Dash part 3 the end. If you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload. Now wasting no more time, let's begin. Sasuke looked at himself in the full length mirror on his closet door and smirked. He was never so ready to go back to work as he was now. He unnecessarily straightened his tie for the eighth time that morning before exiting his bedroom and thumping rather noisily down the stairs, making sure his older brother knew he was there. Four sets of luggage were placed by the door in the foyer, their presence only making Sasuke's smirk grow wider. Good morning, Itachi. He greeted cheerfully as he entered the kitchen. Itachi looked up from the newspaper he was reading and glared at his whistling little brother. Ready for work, I see. Indeed. It's been a while, I hope everyone still remembers me. Kasama came out of the walk-in pantry, which caught Sasuke off guard for a brief second, and grinned at the younger Achiha. You were the talk at work last Friday. Everyone's excited that you're coming back. Atachi could practically see his brother's ego inflate. Really? That's certainly not a surprise Sasuke muttered as he brought a glass of orange juice to his lips. After downing the liquid in three large gulps, he sighed in a satisfied manner and used a dishcloth to wipe his mouth. I noticed that you and Kasama are all packed and ready to go, eh? He asked his brother. The older Achiha merely nodded, feigning that he found an article in the paper unbelievably interesting and couldn't look away. The horn honked outside. Sasuke walked over to the window and pulled the curtain back. Your car is here. Itachi folded up the newspaper and walked out of the kitchen. I'm taking this, he informed Sasuke. Sasuke, Kasama said in a low voice. The raven-haired man turned around and looked up at him curiously. Thanks for letting us stay here. I'm sorry Itachi is so controlling. Sasuke just smirked and folded his arms across his chest. Take this, the blue man said in a whisper and pulled out a folded piece of paper from his pocket. He shoved it into Sasuke's hands then quickly straightened his back when Itachi barged back into the kitchen. Let's go, he said darkly. He looked at Sasuke for a moment then turned on his heels and left them once again. Kasama began to follow him, but stopped in the doorway and turned around to look at his business partner's younger sibling. He winked and then disappeared into the foyer to help Itachi load the bags into the waiting limousine. Sasuke looked down at the paper in his hand before shoving it into his pocket and looking at the clock. Fifteen minutes before it was time for him to be at work. Grinning inwardly, he ran upstairs to brush his teeth before leaving. As Sasuke waited for the elevator to reach the sixth floor, he prepared himself for whatever his employees had waiting for him. Whether it was a welcome back party or a banner, he would be ready. The elevator rang, signaling his arrival. The door opened to reveal the usual office. As predicted, a large, orange banner hung from the ceiling along with streamers. There was a balloon tied to each cubicle as well. Welcome back, Uchiha-san. Everyone, save Shikamaru, Shino, Neji, and Gara, sang enthusiastically. Ignoring the large group of people, Sasuke's eyes hunted for a familiar blonde. His search was interrupted when Sakura and Ino attached themselves to his arms. Uchiha-san. They sang simultaneously in the most annoying, most high-pitched voices ever. We've missed you so much. Your brother is rude and boring. Sasuke smirked. What if I told you that my brother had surveillance cameras installed here this weekend? Both girls squeaked and released their boss, looking around frantically for said cameras. The Uchiha only smirked. He was highly amused by their gullibility. Okay, everyone get to work. He watched everyone scurry back to their assigned offices immediately. Yes, it felt good to be in charge again. Without wasting any time at all, Sasuke made his way to Naruto's office. He nodded to both Sakura, who was sitting at her desk outside his office, and Hinata, who was finishing up a conversation on the phone. Why yes sir, he'll be right with you, sir. Has Hinata always stuttered that much? HN, I guess when you're away for two weeks you begin to notice things you never noticed before. Sasuke mused as he watched Hinata press a button on the phone's cradle before hanging it up. She stood up quietly and shuffled over to Naruto's closed door. She knocked softly and waited for a reply. Yeah, a familiar voice called from the other side. Sasuke soaked up the melodious voice, the sound of honey rolling over rocks. And Naruto-kun, there's a man waiting f for you on line 01. Tell them Naruto's not available at the moment. Sasuke said quickly, I need to speak with him. Hinata turned around and looked at him questionably, but nodded nonetheless. She returned to her desk and picked up the receiver. The Uchiha walked past the blonde's secretary and opened the door violently, causing Naruto to jump. He closed the door behind him and smirked at his wide-eyed dope. Honey, I'm home. He sang casually. Naruto narrowed his eyes into slits. Can I help you, Uchiha-san? 
He practically spat the name out. Sasuke walked over to Naruto's desk and leaned against it. Actually, yes. You see, I was dumped last Friday and... Don't start, Naruto hissed. Uh, I'm the boss here, Naruto, not you. You don't tell me when and when not to speak. Oh, yes. He loved having his authority back. Naruto glowered at him, but remained silent. Sasuke stood up properly and looked at the plain, wooden bookshelf that stood against the wall with the door. He examined the many different oddities that were placed there. He paused at a crayon drawing of an orange stick figure next to a shorter green stick figure. Behind them was a blue house on a red hill and a yellow sun. On the bottom right-hand corner was the name Konohamaru scribbled insufficiently in green. As he looked over the picture again, he noticed a dark square in the middle of it. Frowning slightly, he grabbed the bottom of the paper and lifted it up to reveal a photo of him and Naruto. They took it in a photo booth once when they were at the mall. At the top of the picture was the words I love you in hot pink. Red hearts framed the rest. He smirked when he heard Naruto's harsh intake of breath. I was wondering what happened to this. You took the only copy. Sasuke spoke slowly. Naruto folded his arms and looked in the opposite direction, watching a bird fly past the window. I didn't take anything. I paid for it so it's rightfully mine. He gasped when his swiveled chair was spun around and the raven placed a knee between his legs. You're not over me, Sasuke stated. Naruto stared into his boss eyes, fighting the temptation to rub his groin against the knee. I am. He replied in an utterly calm voice, which surprised him considering that he was having a mental battle at the moment. He didn't know whether to beg the Uchiha to take him right there on the desk or to simply kiss him. Sasuke smirked and, as if reading Naruto's thoughts, began to gently nudge his knee against the blonde's crotch. Naruto's hands flew to his mouth as a throaty moan emitted from them. You are far from being over me. He continued to rub against Naruto, enjoying the gasps of pleasure that came from him. Ah, as Sasuke please don't stop Naruto gripped onto the arms of his chair and gritted his teeth. To his amazement, the Uchiha pulled away almost immediately. The two stared at each other for a long time, one panting blonde and one smirking raven. Finally, Sasuke moved away from him and winked, throwing Naruto off momentarily. He had never witnessed Sasuke wink before. Sasuke exited Naruto's office quickly and went directly to his own. He shut the door behind him and leaned back against it with a shuddering sigh. He looked down at the photograph in his hands and grinned. Naruto relaxed after a minute or two passed and glared at the wall in front of his desk, knowing full well that Sasuke was in the next room praising himself for a job well done. Bastard, he muttered. He averted his eyes to the picture Konohamaru had drawn him six years ago when he was babysitting the boy. He got up from his chair and hesitantly lifted the paper. What the? He stole the photo. Why that little? Hey, Nara, do you have? The key to the girl's bathroom. Shikamaru interrupted quickly. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. A uh, no. A signed autograph of Jerry Lewis. The man said, Am I getting colder or warmer? The Uchiha folded his arms and rested his weight on his left leg. Colder, a holder for safety pins. Slightly warmer, it's a holder for something. Shikamaru rubbed his temples. A picture frame. Sasuke blinked. Yes, do you have one? The lazy man stood up slowly and walked over to a black picture frame that still had the default photo in it along with the size. You can have this, he handed it to his boss. The raven-haired man smirked and took it. Thank you. He returned to his office and hurriedly placed the photo of him and Naruto in the frame. He set it on his desk and inwardly congratulated himself on a job well done. Sasuke stuffed his hands into his pocket and froze. Pulling his left hand out he stared at the folded piece of paper that rested in his palm. Oh right, Kasama gave this to me this morning. Without any delay, he unfolded the paper and scanned over it quickly. It's just a page torn from someone's planner he mumbled. He flipped it over to see if anything was on the back. Sure enough, there were three more dates. Meeting with father at Uchiha Inc. At four o'clock was written under one of them. Realization dawned on Sasuke. This was from Itachi's planner. A wicked smile played on the younger Uchiha's lips. I have needed to speak with you for some time. Father, he said aloud to himself in one of his darkest voices. And it looks like I'll be seeing you next Tuesday. Temeri knocked on her younger brother's office door and waited in silence, shifting her weight to the other foot as she looked down at the manila folder in her hands. Frowning slightly, she knocked again, a little harder this time, and waited once more. Finally giving up, she let herself in. Dora, she asked, pausing in the doorway with one hand still on the doorknob. The man stood up quickly and looked at his sister with a blank expression. What is it, Temeri? The blonde-haired woman made a weirded-out face. What were you doing? Hem? Oh, nothing. Just looking for secret passages, that's all. That's all. The redhead nodded once in response. Seeing that she was going to get nothing else out of him, she shrugged and moved further into the room, slapping the folder onto his desk. 
Uchiha san wants you to look over these and pass them on to Neji. Gara walked over to stand beside her and poked the documents warily. Who does Neji give it to when he's done? Uchiha san. I think I can remember that. You sure? Temori giggled. Want me to write it down for you just in case. Gara glanced at her out of the corner of his eye. His sister flinched slightly at the piercing emerald staring intensely at her. I was just kidding, Gara. I know you don't need. That would be nice. She was taken aback by this. W what? Write it down for me. Please, on a large, lime green poster board with hot pink and purple letters. Temery stared at him for a long time. She realized he was being dead serious and frowned. Do it yourself. With that, she marched out of the office, abandoning the duty of closing the door behind her. Gara smirked to himself and wiggled his hips. Done, done, done another bites the dust. The blonde ignored him and walked into the hallway, stopping short at someone shouting. Hey. Kakashi jumped when Rock Lee appeared from his cubicle and pointed an accusing finger at him. Let me see that pen. The silver-haired man sighed as Lee charged towards him. Oh great first he was inspecting hands now he's probably inspecting pens. The bushy-browed man snatched the dark green ballpoint pen from Kakashi's hand and held it to his face closely, crossing his eyes as he examined it. This, he said dramatically and pointing to it with his unoccupied hand. This looks suspiciously like the pen that went missing from my desk this morning. Kakashi glared down at him. What the hell are you talking about? Hear me now, fellow colleagues. He shouted, ignoring the older man and turning around to face everyone behind him, which was Sakura, Hinata, Choji, Ino, and Kiba. Even Naruto, Uruka, and Sasuke poked their heads out of their offices, watching curiously. Hadake-san is a thief and a liar. What? That was all the silver-haired man could say in his defense. He has robbed me of my pride and joy. My work of art. My. For Christ's sake, it's a fucking pen. Kakashi yelled over him. It's my fucking pen. Lee shouted back, turning around to face him again. And you stole it. Keep it. I don't care. Kakashi moved around him and headed back to his office, forgetting that he was on his way to get Shikamaru to sign some paperwork. Lee bounced after him, face pulled into a ridiculously fake angry expression. What? No haggling. A vicious snarl ripped from his throat and he spun around quickly on his heels, grabbing the pen out of Lee's clutch. It's mine. End of haggling session. He turned around again and entered his office, slamming the door behind him in Rock Lee's face. Why do I work with these people? Don't you dare, Choji. Hinata knows you're my friend and she'll think I'm a freak and won't talk to me. Kiba hissed as he and Choji stood by the water cooler. Fine, then who do you suggest I do it to? Choji inquired in an irritated tone, upset that his plans were being altered. The dog lover thought for a moment and stared down the long hallway. Sekura. Choji inhaled sharply through his nose. Are you kidding? Lee will kill me. No he won't. It's a dare, it's not like anything really went on between you two. The brunette said quickly and patted his friend on the shoulder. Just go, the sooner you do it, the sooner it's over. The chubby man nodded automatically at Kiba's words and walked forward to Sekura's desk. He began dragging his feet when he got to Hinata's desk, which was right across from Sekura's. He looked back at Kiba who was still standing by the water cooler with his arms crossed. He gulped and turned back to Sekura. Hi, it came out much smoother than he expected, which only boosted his confidence. Sekura Haruno looked up at him and smiled sweetly. Hi, Choji. Need something? Oh yeah, listen, Sekura. Last night was a mistake and I honestly don't want to start a relationship with you. Sekura frowned. What are you talking about, Choji? Exactly. Let's just act like it never happened. What are you talking about? She repeated harshly. I'm just saying. Choji. Oh shit. Lee towered over the brunette with a frustrated expression. Why are you upsetting Sekura? Choji took a step back, but Lee followed him. I didn't mean. This is considered harassment, fatty. Sekura shouted. Fatty. The bushy-browed man took a step back. Sekura you shouldn't have said that. Did you just call me fat? Choji bellowed, practically causing the office walls to vibrate. They could faintly hear the janitor cry earthquake. In the background, everybody get down. Lee instructed right before he tackled Choji to the ground. Hinata ducked under her desk as ordered while Sekura ran to take cover in Naruto's office. She had to leap over the two men wrestling on the ground just to get there. She swung the door open and stopped in mid-stride. Yuachiha san, what are you doing to Naruto? Both men looked up. Naruto blushed while Sasuke merely smirked mischievously. It just so happened that Sekura walked in right as the raven finished tying the blonde to his chair using the phone cord and the wire connected to the mouse for the computer. It's rude not to knock, Sekura. Sasuke said in a calm, sweet voice. Sekura-chan, help me. Hit him over the back of the head with that statue on my shelf. Naruto cried. If she does that, she'll be fired. The raven-haired man said bluntly, turning to glare at Naruto. 
The blonde became silent and turned his head to the side. You should get fired for sexual harassment. Naruto mumbled. What was that, Naruto? He sang. Naruto began to whistle and looked at all the suddenly interesting dots on the ceiling. Sakura inhaled deeply, standing as still as a statue with wide eyes. She jumped when Sasuke looked over at her. H how long have you two been like this? Blue eyes widened, knowing exactly what Sasuke was going to say. Aya Naruto dropped his head and gazed down at the hand cupping his crotch. Damn it, quite a while. Actually, although I normally don't have to be this forceful he looked up at Naruto and smirked as he began moving his hand again. Oh, it's also rude to watch people when they're about to have sex. What? Naruto's voice raised an octave or two. We're not doing anything. You're letting me go right now. Now, you see H-I-H-A. He panted from the mixture of yelling and the pleasure. I have to do something. The blonde looked over at Sakura pleadingly. The pink-haired woman nodded her head once in understanding and cleared her throat. Sasuke turned his head and glared at her. I thought I told you to leave, Haruno. Ah uh, yes sir, you did, however, being your secretary, I must inform you of the meeting about to take place in two minutes that has been scheduled since last Wednesday. Employer and employee stared at each other for several seconds. A silent battle raged on in their eyes filled with determination. Finally, after what seemed like forever to Naruto, the Uchiha sighed and stood up. He untied the blonde and grabbed him by the tie. This isn't over, Naruto. I don't care what Itachi told you, it's he gave a quick peck on Naruto's lips. Not, another kiss. Over. This time his mouth lingered on Naruto's a bit longer before he pulled away from the dazed, blushing man and exited the room. The room filled with a heavy silence, so Naruto found the need to speak. Thanks, Sekura. You really saved me there. Sekura looked at him with slightly wide green eyes. All right, you should get to the boardroom, Naruto. Hey, what for? I wasn't just making up the excuse of the meeting. There really is one about to start in a minute. Ah, oh, I'm going to be late. Shikamaru stared at Sasuke as he glared at the folder in his hand, subconsciously clicking his pen over and over again. He was upset about something. Anyone could see that clearly. Not that the lazy man honestly cared. But, this was the perfect opportunity to perform his dare. He glanced at the raven-haired man quickly then sighed and stood up from the table, catching the attention of anyone who was already in the boardroom, waiting for the meeting to start. He cleared his throat and faced his boss. Uchiha san do you need a hug? The clicking stopped. Sasuke did not lift his head, but his eyes met Shikamaru's. No, he hissed and returned to frowning at the folder. The irritating clicking returned. Finally, everyone showed up, save the secretaries, and the meeting began. Naruto nodded absently to himself before sagging his shoulders and unbuttoned his jacket. After removing that and tossing it to the side, he loosened his tie. I just have to make myself comfortable during a meeting. Don't make eye contact with anyone pretend you're the only one in the room. With this state of mind, the blonde continued to fulfill the duty of his dare, kicking off his shoes and rolling up the sleeves of his shirt. Naruto, said man cringed at the sound of Sasuke's firm, commanding voice. He gulped and looked up, meeting everyone's curious eyes. This made him flinch and he quickly directed his gaze towards his boss, blushing. Why yes sir. Sasuke smirked and placed both hands on the table, leaning forward. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your striptease. It's just that, we're trying to have a seminar, here, and I find you very distracting. He licked his lips tauntingly while waiting for Naruto to say something. He knew this was one of the blonde's stupid tricks, of course. The usual suspects were snickering around the table uncontrollably. Ah, uh, you see, sir I it's November 17th Naruto was getting dizzy from his own thoughts as he stuttered pathetically. The Uchiha looked down at his watch, which had a small section on the face displaying the date. It's the 18th, he corrected. The blonde's face faltered for a moment. Ah uh, yes, but yesterday was November 17th. Your point, we didn't celebrate it. Sasuke raised a questioning eyebrow. Shikamaru, after using all of his self-control to stop laughing at his friend's idiocy, cleared his throat, successfully capturing his boss' attention. You see, Uchiha-san, three years, on November 17th, Naruto, Choji, and I were out by the river walk when, for no reason, fireworks started going off on the other side of the river. Ever since then, the three of us have celebrated that day, calling it Raft Day. And that stands for, the raven-haired man pressed, random acts of fireworks day. Choji cheered. Naruto gazed at Sasuke hopefully. That was close. Sasuke frowned as he processed this information. That's nice, however, he narrowed his eyes and looked at the blonde. It doesn't explain why Naruto was stripping. Naruto laughed nervously and rubbed the back of his neck. Good old-fashioned fun. The Uchiha smiled warmly at him, causing Naruto to relax and grin back. My office, after we're done in here, he said in his most cheerful voice. The blonde's smile vanished immediately and he groaned in disappointment. 
Naruto. Tiba called and ran after his friend who was about to enter their boss office. Naruto paused and stared at his friend blankly. Let me go in first, K. Okay. Look what I've got. The brunette held up a packet of papers stapled together. It's my dare. He explained when Naruto merely stared at it in wonder. The blonde's mouth formed the shape of an O in understanding and he nodded, moving to the side for his fellow colleague to pass. Kiba knocked on the thick wooden door of Uchiha-san's office and waited for a reply. Sasuke smirked when three loud thuds sounded at his door and he shut his laptop. Come in. His face fell immediately when his blonde didn't enter the room. He glared at an Yuzuka Kiba and crossed his arms in front of his chest. What is it? Kiba coughed into his fist at the coldness of the Uchiha's voice. Pushing that aside, he walked into the large office and held out the pack of papers to the other man. Sasuke glared down at the paper and examined the title on the front page. Unfair non-dismissal. By Kiba and Yuzuka. What is this? He asked, for once honestly curious as to what the brunette was up to. Certainly he isn't smart enough to think of this himself maybe Shikamaru helped. Kiba cleared his throat in a professional manner. Uchiha-san, have you ever thought of where I could be now if you had fired me? Please turn to page one. He grinned inwardly when Sasuke flipped the cover page back. As it says on the very first line, I claim compensation for all of these ideas, so please refrain from unauthorized use of them. Get on with it, in Yuzuka. Right, did you know I have a strong interest in dogs? Sasuke looked up at him skeptically. Yeah, I got the hint with all the pictures of your dog on your cubicle walls and the screensaver and wallpaper on your computer. Kiba stared at him blankly for a moment. Oh yeah anyways, I could be a judge at a dog show, or the owner of the next best dog salon in the country. Not to mention, as much as this all sounds very appealing, you should have thought about that before graduating from college in the planning and development department. The Uchiha interrupted coolly. And if you hate your current job so badly, why don't you simply quit instead of begging me to fire you? That won't look good on your resume, you know. Yes sir, but... Sasuke stood up and posed himself in a manner of authority. Furthermore, this document here is jam-packed with incorrect grammar usage and spelling errors. Check page 4. I think you might have gotten ravaged confused with rabbish. Look them up in a dictionary. They're actually very different. He slapped the papers down on his desk. Now if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment to attend to. With that, Sasuke brushed past Kiba and walked into the hallway. The brunette gritted his teeth. Pompous asshole. I heard that. Me, Shika, I need you to explain this file to me. Naruto announced as he barged into his friend, colleague's office. What the hell does this word mean, eh? He narrowed his eyes, willing them to see further into the dark office. His friend wasn't there. He scoffed and turned on his heels, stalking out of the room and slamming the door shut behind him. He walked down the hallway and glanced into Choji's cubicle. It was empty and the computer was off. An open bag of barbecued potato chips was still there from yesterday. Naruto frowned and hurried further down the hall, ignoring the call from Sekira telling him not to run. He skidded to a stop and whipped his head to the right, then the left. Both Kiba and Lee were absent from their usual spots. Holy crap they haven't been Naruto swallowed thickly at the thought. Fired, have they? He shook his head quickly and slammed the palm of this right hand into his forehead. Their stuff is still here. Don't think like that, Yuzumaki, he murmured to himself. Don't think like what, Yuzumaki? You're not having dirty thoughts, are you? An all too familiar dark voice asked in a sickeningly sweet tone. Naruto looked up quickly and stared at a smirking Uchiha who was rolling his sleeves down. The blonde figured he must have just come from the men's restroom, which puzzled him since the raven-haired man had his own private bathroom in his office. Naruto would know, it was only place where he could be as loud as he wanted when they had sex in the office, that is, while they were secretly dating. Of course, all of that was the distant past now. The blonde blushed as the memories began flooding his head and he reflexively took two steps back. I, I was just looking for Shikamaru. He shouted defensively. I'm Choji and Lee and Kiba. Hem, oh, I sent them to a conference in Tokyo. They'll be back on Monday. Sasuke's face became expressionless as he spoke. He walked past the blushing man and smirked quickly. We should do it again, sometime in the bathroom, I mean. A shiver shot down Naruto's spine and a small whimper escaped him, causing him to flush even darker. Sasuke grasped a tan wrist and forced Naruto to face him. Nothing has ever stopped us before why now? Naruto gasped silently and looked at the Uchiha with eyes filled with longing and confusion. He looked down the hallway to his left to see if anyone was watching them. When he found nothing, he slid his wrist out of Sasuke's hand and replaced it with his own hand, interlacing their fingers. He pushed the raven back, then to the side, until they were hidden by the walls of Lee's cubicle. 
I'm at a complete loss here. Sasuke Naruto muttered into the taller man's pale ear. I'm trying to save both our jobs and you're making it very difficult. Both men could feel Naruto's resolve slipping away entirely, and the current situation was falling into Sasuke's favor. All the blonde needed now was a little boost. Sasuke placed his free hand in Naruto's and buried his face in the crook of the blonde's neck. Let me worry about all of that. I'll take the burden off your shoulders so the only thing you have to do is love me. Sas Sasuke Naruto closed his eyes and allowed the Uchiha to turn them around and lift him onto Lee's desk. He was faintly aware of the sound of papers fluttering to the floor. The raven-haired man released a barely audible moan and inhaled the blonde scent. God, Naruto, you have no idea how much I need you. Blue eyes fluttered open when he heard footsteps heading their way. He pushed Sasuke away quickly and hopped of the desk, turning to the side to examine a plastic container holding five manila folders. Sasuke hissed and watched Naruto's jerky movements. I'm sure he put it in here. I gave him the file yesterday the blonde said rather loudly. The Uchiha raised an eyebrow, but stilled when a movement in his peripheral vision caught his attention. Ah, Uchiha-san, there you are. You have a phone call on line one. Sekura sang, leaning against the cubicle wall casually. Sasuke looked back at the blonde who was still blindly shuffling through the folders. Good call, Dobe. He put on his expressionless mask and faced Sekura again. Thank you, he said quietly and walked away. After Sekura was sure she heard her boss office door close, she squealed and turned her sparkling eyes to Naruto. You two were about to do it on Lee's desk. Shut up, Sekura. Naruto blushed madly and moved away from the folders that held little importance to him now. Y'all are kind of cute together. Please, Sekura, I don't need you fantasizing about us. Too late. It started after I walked in on you guys the first time. Da, Dara, 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 G-A-R-A-A-A-A. The redhead stood up quickly and grabbed his stapler, holding it above his head just in case. Gara, 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 Why the hell do you have a stapler in your hand? Naruto cried as he burst into the redhead's office. Gara sighed and tossed it onto his desk noisily. I thought you were something else. What do you want? Naruto hesitated a moment before speaking. Um, Shika. Oh, right, he sent me an email with the dares. Apparently we each have to pull off three to make up for their absences. Gara trailed off as he sat in his chair, and turned it to the desk behind him where his computer sat. The blonde frowned, causing his nose to wrinkle. When I was gone for a day I had to make up my dare when I came back. Why do we have to do theirs? Green eyes stared at him intensely. Naruto flinched under the heated gaze. Well you know cause I mean. You have a point, Gara smirked at the visible relief in Naruto's eyes. However, I like the dares I was assigned. So if I'm doing them, so are you. He turned back to his computer. Why yes sir. Okay, your first dare is to list your colleagues in order of their sexual attractiveness. Stick the list someplace where everyone can see it and refuse to elaborate. The blonde guffawed loudly, causing Neji and Temri to practically fall out of their chairs in surprise. That's going to ruin me he said suddenly. All laughing ceased. Suck it up. You're such a na na na. I'm sorry. Thought so. A heavy, awkward silence filled the room. Naruto watched the back of Gara's chair as the redhead continued to read the email. Um he said rather shyly. What's yours? Gara smirked and turned his chair around to look at the blonde. I have to claim I recently discovered I was a witch in my previous life and relive the moments I was burned at the stake. Naruto's laughter filled the room once again. That's great, that's great. Dara furrowed his brow. Why? A knock interrupted his question and Neji entered the room without waiting for permission. What's going on in here? The brunette eyed Naruto suspiciously. Green eyes examined the Hyuga quickly. He had his long, silky brown hair pulled back in a low, loose ponytail. His sleeves were rolled up to his elbows and his tie was gone. Neji, you look really sexy today. He stated without thinking, catching both the brunette and blonde off guard. Wow at Neji and Gara covered their ears from the ear-splitting shout Naruto gave. What the fuck is going on in here? Do you realize how loud you are being? All three men stiffened and turned to look at an infuriated Uchiha. Naruto looked from Sasuke to Neji to Gara. He gulped and then scratched the back of his neck. Well now I suppose I should be going then. He began walking, but the wind was knocked out of him when Sasuke held his arm out stiffly to the side, blocking his exit. Uchiha he growled low enough so only the man next to him to hear. Sasuke merely smirked as he stared at the brunette and redhead standing in front of him who were watching the two with impassive expressions. Get back to work you too. Naruto, your office, the blonde asked with enthusiasm unknown to him. 
He screwed his eyes shut tight and willed away the blush forming on his cheeks. Ha, yeah, indeed. Sasuke growled deep in his throat. Once again, Sakura had interrupted them right before they could have sex. His brother had called asking if Sasuke had by any chance found a paper that might have fallen from his planner. Of course that page happened to be the one with the scheduled appointment with their father for next week. So Sasuke feigned innocence and declared that he hadn't found any such thing. He cussed under his breath and got out of his chair. Screw reviewing parking lot and sign placement plans. He had a blonde to do. The Uchiha exited his office and immediately turned to the right, coming face to face with Naruto's closed office door. There, on a bright orange sheet of paper, was a list of names. Sasuke read the title aloud in a low voice. Sexual attractiveness according to Yuzumaki Naruto. Nara Shikamaru. Sibaku Nogara. Hyuga Naji. Harik Kakashi. Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke stopped at his name. Five. He was number five. Shikamaru was number one. Dobe Naruto. Luckily for our favorite blonde, he was already working on his second dare which was out of Sasuke's reach, the fifth floor. The fifth floor of the Sanin building was a postal office. All mailing and shipping issues were worked out here and some other stuff that Naruto had no clue about. He walked around, mystified, until he was at what appeared to a receptionist desk. A man with shoulder-length blonde hair that was in half a ponytail sat behind the desk, blowing a large pink bubble from his mouth. Um excuse me. The blonde looked up at him with sharp blue eyes that narrowed immediately. Can I help you? I'm very busy, in case you can't tell. You were just sitting there staring into space. Naruto growled in his thoughts, but put on a grin despite his annoyance. Can I interest you in buying this ant farm? He held up a glass case filled with dirt and roaming ants. He had stolen it off Shino's desk while the man was away. He wouldn't notice one ant farm missing out of the six he had on his shelf. Back upstairs, a Burem Shino returned to his office and paused immediately. Someone was in here he scanned the room cautiously and his eyes widened. Fiend, someone took one of my precious kingdoms. Who took my ant farm? I bet it was that stupid blonde. Yuzumaki Naruto sneezed and grimaced when the essence of it went inside the ant farm. The man, who Naruto just recently found out was named Idara, was examining the glass case carefully. He took no notice to the sneeze and simply stood up straight. I'll take it. How does twenty dollars sound? Naruto's eyes widened. I was just kidding. It's not for sale. Hehe, he, it's not even mine. Sorry dude. The blonde turned around and was about to run off when he bumped into someone and stumbled backwards, only to be caught by an arm wrapping around his waist. He looked up into obsidian eyes and gasped. A man with short black hair and eyes smiled at him warmly. Hello there. I've never seen you around here before. You knew. Naruto blushed and tried to pull away from the man. In response, he got another arm around him. Please let me go. This guy looked a lot like a happy, paler Sasuke. It was rather scary. I'm sorry. And you are. He was trying to sell me some bogus crap. Didara announced behind them. You were interested in it a minute ago, asshole. Naruto shouted in his head. Sai raised both his eyebrows. Oh, are you from the sales company on the third floor? Naruto. Sai and Naruto looked at an out-of-breath Sasuke who was gripping onto the metal door frame. Naruto blushed even darker as his eyes widened in a slow, dramatic pace. Sasua, Uchiha-san. The raven-haired man glared at the smiling black-haired man that was hugging onto Naruto. Get away from him. He shouted, pulling his lover out of the other's hold. He wrapped his arms around Naruto protectively. What are you doing down here, Naruto? So your name is Naruto? Sai asked casually, ignoring the fuming Sasuke. That's cute. Will you go away? Sasuke growled, tightening his arms reflexively when the other man turned to face them. This is where I work. And besides, should a boss really be hugging onto his employee like that? Blue and ebony eyes widened at this. Sasuke gritted his teeth. What makes you think I'm his boss? Sai smiled, closing his eyes in the process. He called you Uchiha-san. Naruto took this chance to speak. It was out of respect. I can call him Sasuke if I wanted to. The black-haired man's face fell. Oh, so you're not Itachi. Do I look like Itachi? The younger Uchiha hissed. Sai held his hands up in a defensive manner. I don't know what Itachi looks like. I've only heard of him. He owns this company, you know. This caught Naruto's attention. He does. The raven-haired man sighed. Yeah but that's not the point. The point is we're going upstairs now. Uo, I smell hot, hot office sex. Sai squealed in a girlish voice. Sasuke smirked. You must be psychic. Eh? Naruto cried. He was pulled away by the Achiha and into the elevator that was conveniently still on the floor. Sasuke pushed him against the wall, removed the forgotten ant farm from his grasp, set it on the elevator floor, and pinned his arms above him. He gulped at the dark glare the taller man was giving him. I'm number 5 on your sexual attractiveness chart, Dobe. Sasuke stated darkly. 
What does Shikamaru have that I don't? The blonde blushed and averted his eyes to the ground. W well he's so aloof and his ears are pierced. It's hot. Sasuke frowned and pulled away from Naruto when the doors slid open. He stuffed his hands in his pockets and walked out slowly. S Sasuke, wait. Naruto cried as he picked up the glass tank. He rushed out of the elevator, quickly placed it on the table in the small kitchen area, and chased after the raven-haired man. Sasuke, for once, Naruto honestly didn't care that all of his colleagues were watching him as he cried after their boss, using his first name. Sasuke, would you fucking stop for one minute, please? Why should I? I'm only number five to you. The Uchiha snapped. He wouldn't admit this to Naruto, but this was all an act. He was making the blonde come out in the open in front of everyone in the office without realizing it. And maybe, just maybe, he might just be able to reveal their relationship. Please, Sasuke, don't take it personally. Naruto whined. Sasuke stopped next to Hinata's desk and spun around quickly, facing Naruto. Am I your number five in bed too? Blue eyes looked horrified. W what? You don't think I'm cheating on you, do you? The Uchiha was finding it very hard not to smirk now. He quickly swept his eyes over the area around them and noticed people were peering over cubicle walls or sticking their heads out of their doors to watch what was going on. Most of them seemed more intrigued rather than shocked. I don't know, Naruto. You tell me. After all, you did break up with me. It was easy for you, huh? All you needed was a reason and when Itachi threatened you. A loud smack sounded. Obsidian eyes widened to the extreme. He stared down at the teary-eyed blonde in front of him in surprise. Naruto sniffed and wiped his eyes with the back of the hand he had just used to slap the raven-haired man. I can't believe you think I'm cheating on you. Sasuke's expression softened tremendously, and he cupped Naruto's cheeks with his hands. Finally, he allowed his mask to slip and a small smile formed on his lips. He leaned down and nuzzled the unkempt blonde hair gently, sighing in contentment. I suppose I was being irrational. You suppose? Naruto retorted. Sasuke closed his eyes and smirked. Don't push it, Naruto. I'm still your boss. He felt Naruto stiffen, and then relax. Sasuke and Naruto pushed up on his tiptoes and grasped onto Sasuke's lapel. He leaned his mouth near the raven-haired man's ear and whispered, I have to pee really badly. Can I use your bathroom? The Uchiha's face fell immediately. Fine, what the hell, Gara? Neji shouted when he watched a naked Gara sitting on his desk grab two random documents on the desk and staple them together. Just earlier, the redhead had been claiming that he was a witch in a past life and started screeching about an invisible fire burning him to death. Then he pulled the Hyuga into his office and started stripping. Of course, Neji didn't mind the last part. The sex was great, but now Gara was just acting like a total idiot again. They were lonely I unite two singles and you yell at me. Cupid is sad Gara's expression remained blank as he spoke. You hang out with that Uzumaki guy too much. New Gara sang. His eyes brightened suddenly as he watched Neji put his hair back in its low ponytail. I wanna do it again. Pale blue eyes turned to look at him. Seriously? I mean, I don't mind, but... The redhead hopped off the desk and dashed over to the brunette, hugging him around the waist. Shut up and let's do it. Neji moaned as he was pushed and against the wall his still sensitive manhood rubbing into Gara's. God, I really hope you're not turning into a sex addict. Naruto tapped his fingers on his boss desk while Sasuke got dressed. He picked up the phone and dialed a number he knew from past uses. The Uchiha turned and watched as Naruto, who only had his button-down shirt on, stood with his back to him. Who are you calling? The blonde shushed him quickly before speaking kindly to whoever was on the other line. Hi, my name is Yuzumaki Naruto. I work for Konoha Planning Department, yes ma'am. The one located in the Sanin building, correct, yes ma'am, well. Thank you very much, well. I would like to invite one of your photographers to come witness my boss abseiling naked from the roof of the building, no ma'am. This is not a fluke, it's for charity. Naruto. Sasuke growled and launched himself at the blonde. Oh god. Ah, oh, Uchiha-sama, you shouldn't do that. Ah, Naruto gave a cheeky grin as he continued the obviously fake sex noises, holding the phone above his head. Naruto, do you want to get fired? I can and will fire you. Sasuke didn't realize he had pushed his leg between the blonde's legs until he moaned. The Uchiha glared as he grabbed the phone by its spiral cord and yanked it out of Naruto's hand. You fucking idiot. Blue eyes sparkled as he was lifted onto the desk, Sasuke standing between his legs. But I'm the idiot you fuck. Don't call it that. It makes me sound like scum. We have sex or we make love. We don't fuck. Sasuke corrected him. Naruto stilled and thought about this for a moment. He then chuckled and leaned forward. Sasuke the phone. He pointed down to the abandoned phone on the carpeted floor. The Uchiha looked down and sighed. I really should fire you. Meanwhile, on the other line of the phone. 
Hey, Miyako, who are you on the phone with? Barina asked as she leaned against the door frame of the other woman's small office. The silver-haired woman looked up with wide black eyes and held the phone out to the other female. Raising an elegant eyebrow, she crouched down next to her friend, colleague and they listened together. Oh god, Sasuke, more. Damn it, Naruto, I will never get tired of you calling my name. Knocking, Achiha-san, your brother is here to see you. The two women looked at each other warily before going back to listening. The Shikamaru-san. Nara Shikamaru lifted his head off of his folded arms and looked at the blonde man standing in front of his desk. Oh, you're the new guy, right? Welcome to Konoha Planning Department. Uzumaki Naruto nodded and grinned brightly before his expression returned to one filled with hesitation. Um, you don't remember me, do you? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow. Have I met you before? The blonde gasped in what appeared to be feigned horror. Shika, that's so mean. Eyes widening at the nickname, the black-haired man sat up in his chair. You're that brat from high school, aren't you? Naruto. Naruto laughed loudly. Yep, I can't believe you forgot me. Shikamaru frowned and crossed his arms over his chest. Why would I even want to remember you after what you did to our senior prom and graduation? Naruto's laughter diminished into a faint chuckle and he scratched the back of his neck awkwardly. Yes sorry about that. Shikamaru sighed and leaned back. Don't worry about it. What's done is done. Just don't do anything stupid here, okay? I do hope you've matured since high school. Not one bit, the blonde announced proudly. Oh great. Uzumaki, where are those papers I gave you for proofing yesterday? A cold, sinister voice asked. Naruto jumped and looked up at his boss Orochimaru. Are right here, sir he reached for a folder on his desk and held it out for the older man. Orochimaru looked offended by this. He narrowed his piercing yellow eyes threateningly. I am your superior, Uzumaki. You bring the documents to me. The blonde hopped out of his chair quickly and shuffled over to the black-haired man and handed them to him. He suppressed the yelp of surprise when the folder was practically ripped from his hands. His eyes traveled past Orochimaru's shoulder as a man with raven hair and black eyes walked strolled down the hallway. He was accompanied by a taller man with silver hair. Black eyes fell on him and a shiver shot down his spine from the intensity of them. What is this? Orochimaru hissed, grabbing Naruto's attention and he looked down at the bottom of the last page where his boss was pointing. You told me to sign it when I was done Naruto stated, a little confused by the man's reaction to it. Orochimaru let out a low growl and slammed the folder onto Naruto's desk. I meant the dot over the eye. Why the hell is it a little swirl? The blonde's face paled and he looked down at his signature again. I it's just how I dot my eyes. S sir I've been doing it like that since the second grade. It better stop now. You're no longer in the second grade, as you mock I. Naruto gulped at the dark tone his boss took. Keep it up and you'll be fired. If anyone is being fired, it is you, Orochimaru. A velvety voice said calmly. Orochimaru spun around and gasped. Naruto's eyes widened as the raven-haired man from before leaned against the wall of his cubicle. Uachiha-sama. W what are you why are you Orochimaru stammered. Blue eyes widened. This was the Uchiha Fugaku, the one that owned Kanoa planning department and other businesses that were essential to the country. He looked nothing like Naruto had imagined. He had expected him to have slicked back hair with a beard and to be very well old. The Uchiha smirked and held out his hand behind him. He began to speak while the silver-haired man reached into the inner pocket of his jacket and pulled out a crisp white envelope, placing it in the waiting hand. My father requested that I come down here and check things out. Itachi is busy, you know, with much more important matters. He held out the envelope and Orochimaru took it cautiously. After completing my extra three years at an Ivy League school that revolved around business, I acted as my brother's shadow for a year to get a hang of how the Uchiha companies are to be run. Now, his eyes focused on Naruto and he smirked. I'm taking over Kanoha planning department. What? But I. The silver-haired man stepped forward and folded his arms across his chest. We know you're the one who has been embezzling the company's money as well. Orochimaru stiffened and gritted his teeth. I it wasn't me. It was Naruto, right here. He pointed to the blonde. I was just in here confronting him about it. Naruto, who had been silent due to his captivity in the Uchiha's eyes, snapped to attention and gaped at his boss. The raven-haired man's eyes refocused on Orochimaru and narrowed. How childish to blame it on an employee, we know it was you. We keep track of all of the Kanoha employees including you. Naruto didn't know what happened exactly, but he suddenly found himself in a headlock and something flat pressed against his head. Let's just see you take me. Orochimaru hissed threateningly as he tightened his hold on Naruto and the stapler in his hand. Sasuke and the other man's bodies became stiff and took on a cautious stance. Orochimaru let him go the silver-haired man said slowly, but sternly. The blonde squeezed his eyes shut tightly. I knew this guy was insane. I just knew it. 
blue eyes widened immediately. Shit did I just say that out loud. Naruto looked frantically over at the Uchiha who was shifting his glare between him and Orochimaru. Dobe, he growled. Sasuke then proceeded in one of those annoying calm talks that police usually give people that are about to commit suicide or something dangerous. Naruto had no idea why the bastard was doing that. They never listened. However, he soon realized that the man was simply buying time. It wasn't long till security showed up and Orochimaru panicked and plunged the staple in the back of Naruto's head before the psycho was shot with a stun gun. Naruto blinked rapidly. Why the hell was he remembering the first time he met Sasuke at a time like this? He looked slowly from Itachi to Kasama to Sasuke. They were still topless, though they had pulled their pants back on, and the younger Uchiha was continuing to hug onto him in a protective manner. I'm disappointed in you, Sasuke, Itachi said with mock discontent. The smirk on his face ruined the facade he was trying to make. I should tell father, you should be fired. And Naruto, you're no better than him. The blonde bite the inside of his cheek harshly, not wanting to shout his current thoughts to the older Uchiha. He didn't want to spoil any chance of him and Sasuke getting out of this smoothly. Sasuke looked down at the top of Naruto's head and locked his jaw. He's had this plan for a while. If he and Naruto were to get caught by his brother, he would take full responsibility. He would even claim rape if he had to. Exhaling loudly through his nose, the raven-haired man put a hand on the upper back of Naruto's head and ran a finger over the small scar there. Team, Naruto growled as they stared at each other intensely. Dobe, we've been to five different stores. You don't need anything else. But this shirt is cool. The blonde whined. You especially don't need an orange dress shirt. Sasuke answered back quickly. Seriously, where are you going to wear that? Naruto gaped at him. To work, of course. The raven-haired man frowned deeply. I don't think so. He quickly turned his head to glare at the people watching them who were waiting in line to check out at the counter. Why the hell did Naruto choose a place like this to argue? And it looks great on me too. Sasuke snapped his attention back to the blonde who had apparently, and unfortunately, been ranting about the shirt. You're not getting it, Sasuke deadpanned. Blue eyes were blazing now. You cannot drag me into the stupid mall, take me to all these goddamn stores and then tell me I can't buy anything. We've been walking around in here for 30 minutes. Can't we at least buy one thing? No, Sasuke snapped, gritting his teeth in emphasis. He lowered his voice greatly so that the amused people in the line couldn't hear them. If you do not shut up this instant your ass will be in so much pain tomorrow morning. Naruto's eyes widened and a blush spread across his face. Sasuke smirked in his triumph, but it quickly faded when Naruto made a devious smirk of his own. Is that a threat or a promise, team? The younger Uchiha didn't know why he was suddenly thinking about his first date with Naruto, but it was taking all his willpower not to laugh at their tedious argument. Naruto had ended up getting the shirt anyway, although it was destroyed in their love making that night. The poor thing was practically unrecognizable in the morning. Do you understand? Itachi said rather loudly, capturing his brother's attention. Now hold on a second, Itachi, Kasama, who had been silent this entire time, suddenly said in a deep tone of authority. Itachi turned and glared at his business partner. Stay out of this. No, Kasama said quickly and sauntered over to the older Achiha. He wrapped his arms around the shorter man's stomach and nuzzled the top of his head. Kasame, cut that out this instant. Itachi, you love me right. You said so last night in bed. Naruto's eyes widened comically while Sasuke remained passive. If you don't shut up, Kasame, I'll. I'm your business partner, but I'm also your employee. You hired me, and you could fire me. Even if you have me follow you around and attend important conferences with you, I'm not your equal. You and I are employer and employee. Just like Sasuke and Naruto, Itachi gritted his teeth and glanced at Sasuke who was analyzing everything that was just said. We're different, as you said, you're my business partner. Naruto is a simple employee. Besides, Sasuke has Kakashi as a business partner, so he can't just promote Naruto. Kasama sighed and sagged his shoulders. I honestly didn't want to do this but, Anachiha Shorty, you better appreciate this. If you leave them alone Itachi, I'll let you top. Everything seemed to freeze at that very moment. So many thoughts began to flood Sasuke and Naruto's mind at once. But the loudest one that seemed to be repeated over and over again was oh my god, Itachi is bottom. The older Uchiha frowned and looked Kasame in the eyes. We're role-playing in your cross-dressing too. Just topping isn't good enough. Naruto suddenly felt bad for Kasame. So kinky thoughts ran in the family. The blue man grimaced, but nodded nonetheless. However, you have to keep up your end of the bargain. Leave the twerps alone, got it. Itachi said quickly. Sasuke finally decided to speak. Kasama thank you. Kasama looked at him and smiled wildly, freaking out both Sasuke and Naruto as they stared at pointy sharp teeth. 
How in the hell did Itachi stand kissing that mouth? We're going. However, Sasuke I need to talk to you later. I'll call you to make an appointment, okay? Itachi announced. The young raven-haired man simply nodded, slightly anxious as to what it was his brother wanted. Naruto gripped the sheets of paper beneath him and groaned as Sasuke began to fondle his balls while sucking on the head of his manhood. Sasuke please. The three fingers that were currently stretching him out started their usual search of the bundle of nerves inside the blonde. It didn't take long till Naruto cried out in pleasure. After a few moments of abusing the sensitive area, Sasuke retreated his fingers from the hole and his mouth from Naruto's length. You were right, Naruto. This is a great idea Sasuke smirked as he picked up the bottle of lube that was lying on the swivel chair and squirted a generous amount into the palm of his hand. He sighed softly as he smeared the substance all over his erection. They were currently in Shikamaru's office, on top of his desk. The work day was over, so everyone had gone home already. Naruto had driven back to his apartment, picked up a few items, and came back to the building. He was now a panting mess wearing a pale blue dress that had been his mother's. It was a stretchy fabric, so it fit much better than the sailor Fuku. It was a button-down too, so Sasuke had the entire dress completely open. The Uchiha chuckled and bent down to kiss a tan stomach. He licked his way up to the right nipple and took the nub into his mouth immediately. He teased it with his tongue and bit it harshly before moving to the left one and repeating his actions again. Sasuke. Naruto groaned and laced his fingers in soft raven hair. Sasuke sat up and made an odd combination of a pout and a scowl. You never let me tease you enough but I guess all that can wait till later. With that, Sasuke grabbed the back of Naruto's right knee and placed it over his shoulder. He pressed his hand firmly against a tan left thigh to keep it down on the desk's surface. He settled himself at the blonde's entrance and pushed in without any warning. Naruto let out a soft hiss and gritted his teeth. Sasuke looked down at him and smiled apologetically. Sorry, love. I didn't mean to. Blue eyes glared up at him. Yeah, I know team. You never mean to. The Uchiha chuckled darkly before pulling back and, after receiving a curt nod from Naruto, slamming back in. Papers and folders fell to the floor as the desk shook underneath the constantly shifting weight. Sasuke. Saw Sasuke. All right there. Naruto shouted when a particular thrust brushed against his prostate. The raven-haired man angled his hips so that he hit the gland dead on with each thrust. Naruto propped himself up on his elbows and pushed back against Sasuke with great force. He began to clench and unclench the muscles in his rear, knowing it caused a lot of pleasure for the Uchiha. On Naruto Sasuke gasped breathlessly as he began to speed up. He removed his hand from Naruto's thigh and wrapped it around his weeping cock. He pumped the organ extremely fast while bucking his hips forward, trying to catch up to the pace of his hand. Oh god fuck. I d don't know how much longer I I can on Naruto failed to finish the sentence as his body began to tense with all the built up pleasure. Sasuke, 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 Sasuke he repeated over and over again like a mantra. Said man was bent over now, trying his best to keep up his pace. But both of the men's movements were becoming too jerky and uncontrollable as waves of pleasure washed over their bodies. Yes fuck, yes. The blonde cried out in a long moan that drowned out Sasuke's shout of Naruto's name as they released their seed simultaneously. They panted as they looked into each other's eyes, reveling in the afterglow of their love making. The sound of something hitting the carpeted floor of Shikamaru's office caught both the men off guard and they snapped their heads towards the doorway. The janitor flinched when two sets of eyes met hers. She laughed nervously and picked up the toilet brush she had dropped before apologizing and pushing her cleaning cart away, down the hall towards the bathrooms. A heavy silence filled the room before Naruto gasped as something inside him twitched. Sasuke. He hissed in a whisper. I can't help it. I think it's hot that someone was watching. Pervert. Uchiha-san. Sasuke removed his reading glasses and reached across his desk to his phone. What is it Sakura? There's a rather um distressed Louis San on the line asking for you. The man furrowed his eyebrows and inhaled sharply. Put him on, he said curtly. A second passed before a click was heard. Hello, Mr. Louis, this is Uchiha, Sasuke. What's the problem? He said in his best English accent. Mr. Uchiha, I don't know what kind of business you're running here, but I cannot tolerate this kind of insolence. The Uchiha didn't even flinch at the harshness of the other man. Were you by any chance talking to Yuzumaki, Naruto? No, I was speaking with a Mr. Nara. Sasuke blinked rapidly. What did Mr. Nara say, Mr. Lewis? He started rambling about what a sexy voice I had while we were in the middle of a business transaction. And 
wait, 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 Nara said your voice was sexy. Sasuke rested his elbows on his desk and ran his free hand through his hair, pushing it out of his face. Yes, and if my company is to build anything in the Konoha district. I'm terribly sorry that you had to deal with such rudeness, Mr. Lewis. Unfortunately, I have a very important meeting to attend. I'm redirecting you to Haddock, Kakashi, my business partner. He'll listen to your complaints and handle any loose ends. Thank you for your time. Sasuke pressed a button and hung up the phone. He stood up from his chair and exited his office. Sekura, get Kakashi and tell him Mr. Lewis is waiting for him on line 4. Thanks. The pink-haired woman nodded quickly, not paying much attention to the how quickly the Uchiha was walking towards Shikamaru's office. Naruto flipped off the lights and closed his office door behind him. He was in a rather good mood today. He'd gotten more work done on time than usual and was even able to finish a few other small matters he'd left incomplete for weeks. Even Sasuke praised him for his efforts, and not the usual praise with a blow job or make-out session. No, it was an honest-to-god good work, Yuzumaki. The blonde smiled to himself and looked to his left to see Shikamaru carrying a box full of miscellaneous objects in it. Hey, what's up, Shika? Cleaning up your office. The older man looked at him with the most gloomed expression Naruto has ever seen. Hmm, what's up, man? Can we go get lunch somewhere? I'll pay, Shikamaru said in a low voice. I'm okay. I want ramen. She troublesome. Kiba walked up to Shino who was sitting in the corner of the small cafe located on the first floor of the office building. The bug lover looked at the dog lover with obvious discontent. Kiba, hey, Shino. Shino, Kiba, um so you're eating a sandwich, huh? Shino, Kiba swallowed thickly and loosened his tie. He sat down across from the other man and narrowed his eyes like he usually did in office meetings to make it seem like he meant business. Hey, could I move in with you for a few months if I ever need to you know disappear? Shino raised an eyebrow at this, his attention snagged. And why would you need to disappear? Oh, you never know. Crazy things have been happening these days. I know what you mean. This heat wave is not good for the insects. Yeah, seriously. I mean, maybe they should migrate north of something, right? Kiba let out a quick, loud laugh. Shino remained quiet. Well, it was great chatting with you, man. Thanks for everything. Kiba got out of his chair quickly and began to walk away. You're welcome to stay at my domain anytime. The dog lover paused and slowly turned to look at the other man. Wa, my home, Shino repeated slowly. You're welcome to stay if you ever need to. The attic makes a nice guest room, but you'll have to share it with the termites. A shiver shot down Kiba's back. A thanks, dude. Bye. With that, he walked, ran for his life back to his safe haven. Hey, Choji. Hino said in a distracted tone as she flipped through a folder. It's Choji. Choji snapped, looking up at her sharply. The woman didn't look at him. That's what I said. Anyways, do you? No, no, no. You said Choji. It's Chojai. Blue eyes met his. I know. I said Choji. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Your name is Choji. We've all been calling you Choji. And you're even saying it the same as we all do. Choji. But you said. I know what I said. What's going on here? A deep voice said smoothly. Ino and Choji snapped their heads to look at their boss. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. Choji, you don't want to end up like your friend, do you? Choji opened his mouth to respond before closing it and giving the Uchiha a puzzled look. Without another word, Sasuke placed a file on Sakura's desk and went into his office. End up like my friend. Rock Lee checked his email for the eighth time that afternoon. That's odd, he mused aloud, placing his chin into his left hand while he clicked out of the screen. What is? Kiba asked before stuffing a potato chip into his mouth. No one has responded to the email I sent out this morning. The black-haired man replied with dissatisfaction. Kiba looked at him from the corner of his eye, before sitting up in his chair and shaking his computer mouse, awakening the machine from its slumber. He tapped into his email account and immediately noticed the most recent one was from Lee. He clicked on it and read over its contents. How many of you, my fellow colleagues, would be prepared to respond to an unsolicited email even if you think it's a total waste of time? Yeah, um, I'll give you three guesses as to why no one has responded Kiba chuckled and he deleted the email. They haven't read it yet. Guess again. They are overwhelmed with work and want to respond, but have more important matters to attend to. Um no, not exactly one more guess. They think it's a waste of time. Bingo. Naji and Garo were returning from lunch together as they exited the elevator onto the sixth floor. Kiuga, fetch me a glass of water. Gara said blankly. Naji stilled in his tracks while the redhead continued ahead. Chop, chop. He added, snapping his fingers twice. Neji narrowed his eyes and purposefully continued back to his office, roughly bumping his shoulder against Gara's in the process. He slammed his door behind him. Gara couldn't help the smirk that spread on his lips. What's up, Shika? You seem to be out of it. 
Naruto said as he and Shikamaru arrived at the entrance of their office building. He continued through the revolving door, but stopped in the main hallway when he noticed that Shikamaru hadn't followed him in. He turned and went back through the door. Shikamaru stuffed his hands in his pockets and shrugged his shoulders. He slowly moved towards the metal bench that sat in front of the poor excuse of a garden near the entrance. Naruto took the seat next to him. Shikamaru, everyone makes stupid decisions, you know that, right? The older man said slowly. The blonde tilted his head to the side, but nodded nonetheless. No one is perfect. And if you're too mature at a young age, the immaturity grabs you by the neck and squeezes when you're older. Naruto stared down at his feet, trying to grasp what Shikamaru was getting at. The game was one of the best things I've ever done my whole life. I've never had so much fun with just a group of friends. I've never smiled so much never felt so trouble-less. A bright grin formed on Naruto's face, but when he saw that the other man wasn't smiling, it disappeared just as quickly as it had come. With great power comes great responsibility. Do you know where that comes from? Shikamaru asked, looking at Naruto for the first time since they got there. Naruto chewed on the inside of his cheek for a moment, thinking. The American president, Thomas Jefferson said that, right. The black-haired man smiled softly. Yes, he leaned forward and rested his elbows on his knees. The game isn't powerful at all, but you still need to be responsible with it. Never slip up. Blue eyes narrowed. Shika what's going on? Shikamaru inhaled deeply through his nose and let it out through his mouth. I was fired today. The blonde shot up out of his seat in blinding speed, staring down at his friend with wide eyes. What? Sasuke fired you? Because of one of the dares, right? Oh god, it was because of one of the dares we should have stopped the game so long ago. I knew this would happen. Chill out, spazoid. Sit down, I'm not done. Shikamaru watched as the younger man paced back and forth, taking deep breaths, before finally settling down next to him once more. I was fired from Kanoha Planning Department, but he set me up with a job on the 10th floor in the Technology Development Department. Naruto snapped his head towards his friend and gaped. Dude, that's like a promotion. Yeah, but his exact words were, Nara, you're fired. Take your things and don't show up for work tomorrow. Naruto's shoulders sacked. Why would Sasuke do that? Because I screwed up. I used my dare on a very important business call. I could have cost the company millions of dollars. That's why I'm telling you to be careful with the game. Don't just stop it but think before you do the dare. Always be 200 steps ahead. Naruto nodded slowly, not exactly paying attention to what Shikamaru was saying. Hey, the black-haired man nudged his friend in the arm with his elbow. Naruto looked at him solemnly, before giving his friend a soft smile and nudging him back. The two let out a small laugh before they got up from the bench. Shikamaru headed towards his car and Naruto headed towards his office. That night, Sasuke and Naruto slept in their own homes, in their own beds, alone. Sekura-chan, I need to speak with Sasuke, Naruto said through gritted teeth. He was trying to appear pleasant to the other woman, but was failing miserably. He was simply too pissed to even pretend to be happy. Sekura fiddled with her necklace as she looked for something around her desk. Ah, here it is she muttered quietly to herself. She held up a white sheet of paper with the Kanoha Planning Department seal on the top of it. Naruto took the paper out of her hand and read it to himself. Dear Sakura, be a dear and don't let Naruto into my office if he shows any signs of being irate. Thanks, Sasuke. P.S. Same goes for Choji and Temori. That bastard. The blonde screeched. He abandoned the note on Sakura's desk and turned to the Uchiha's door. God damn it, Sasuke. I need to talk to you. He shouted as he banged on the door. Open the fucking door, Naruto. Sakura cried, shooting up from her desk and approaching the man. She pulled at the back of his collar roughly, cutting off his air for a brief second. Naruto placed a hand over his throat and coughed roughly. Sakura, don't you Sakura on me. You're being a nuisance. The pink-haired woman scolded. But do you have any idea what he's done? Yes, I do. And I'm a bit peeved too, but there's nothing we can do about it. And acting like an obnoxious, whining kid isn't going to help either. He's such a bastard. Naruto. Both Sekura and Naruto jumped at the sudden appearance of the voice. They turned and looked at Sekura's intercom. Shut the hell up. I'm trying to get work done. Sasuke, I need to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Now get back to work or I'll have you escorted out of here by security for being a disturbance. Blue eyes widened. Why was Sasuke acting like this? The Uchiha has been in a bad mood ever since Naruto gasped quietly. Sasuke had gone to a very important meeting the day before yesterday. And usually he took Kakashi with him. But this time he hadn't. Did something happen at the meeting? Naruto. Sekura hissed as the blonde moved closer to their boss's door. She tilted her head to the side when Naruto knocked lightly on the door. When no immediate response came, they both started to wonder if Sasuke hadn't heard the knock. 
But then the Uchiha swung the door open and glared at Naruto. What? He snapped. Naruto challenged his glare with a determined expression. I need to talk to you. Sasuke growled deep in his throat. Look, Naruto, I know you're mad about me firing Shikamaru, but I'm not going to change my mind. He's gone. Deal with it. Then no, it's not about that, I swear. I need to talk to you about something else. Sasuke blinked as he raked his eyes over Naruto's whole body. His stance was relaxed yet he seemed almost unapproachable. Okay come in. The Uchiha made sure to lock the door after closing it behind him. Welcome, Nara-san. Uchiha-sama regarded you quite highly. He said you had a lot of potential. Your office is this way, a bearded man said cheerfully. Shikamaru followed him silently, noting that he reeked of cigarettes. They entered a brightly lit room that was furnished with a small desk, a bookshelf, a filing cabinet and a table with a large operating system on it. You do understand what we do here, right? Yeah, we're pretty much the geek squad of the whole Sanin building. And we assist the water and power technicians. The older man added, scratching at his chin. Over here, he said, walking up to the bookshelf. He reached between the shelf and the wall and pulled out a rolled up poster sheet. This is the blueprint of the entire Sanin building. As you can see here a Shikamaru San. The black haired man just stood there, staring at the paper with wide eyes. Shit. I forgot the score sheet in my office. I met with my dad the other day, Sasuke said quietly. Naruto didn't move an inch. He continued to lean against the raven's desk, staring at the wall. Apparently Itachi has told him everything except us. He knows about you and your friend's wacky behavior and the lack of discipline within this entire office. He said if I had half the ability to run a company like Itachi did, I would have been promoted by now. But here I am. Stuck in the smallest of all the Uchiha-owned businesses because my dad doesn't believe I'm fit to run any others. Silence fell between them. Naruto opened his mouth to say something, but a knock at the door caused them both to pause. Uchiha-sama, it's Kakashi. Come in, Sasuke called out. The white-haired man entered the room holding a rolled-up sheet of paper. Naruto, if you'll excuse us the Uchiha said calmly. The blonde stood up and was about to step forward when Kakashi stopped him. I think it will do us good if he stayed here. Both Naruto and Sasuke raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. Kakashi spread out the large sheet of paper over Sasuke's neat desk. He quietly apologized when he accidentally knocked over a picture frame. He picked it up and noticed it was of Sasuke and Naruto. He smirked and set it face down. I found this in Nara Shikamaru's office. It was tucked behind a bookshelf. Blue eyes widened and Naruto stiffened his entire body. He suddenly felt very queasy. Laid out before Sasuke, his boss and his lover was the score sheet. And taped under Naruto's name was every single dare that he ever completed along with its points. Sasuke glared at the paper for what seemed like an eternity to Naruto. Finally, he cleared his throat and looked at Kakashi. Thank you, Kakashi-san. You are dismissed. The older man nodded and turned to leave. He smirked challengingly at Naruto before he exited the office. Naruto curled his fists into tight balls. Damn it, Kakashi. After I saved your ass from Itachi, you still go and rat on me. You unbelievable bastard. Naruto, Sasuke averted his eyes to the blonde who was staring at the floor. Naruto, look at me. When Naruto did not comply, Sasuke straightened his shoulders and lifted his chin. Naruto, as your boss, I order you to look at me. Naruto flinched at how deep Sasuke's voice had become and he quickly snapped his head up to look at his boss. The Uchiha smirked and tapped a finger on the score sheet. It appears that all of your shenanigans was nothing but a mere game to you and your friends. Perhaps our relationship is too. What? Naruto screeched. You only got into a relationship with me because you knew I would go easy on you and your friends when you guys acted up. It wasn't a question, it was a statement. Sasuke, how could you even think that? I love you. You sucked up to me when you didn't want someone in trouble. You would distract me from there. He looked down at the paper and twirled a hand around in the air. He jumped when a hand slammed down on his desk. His eyes traveled from the hand, up the arm and finally stared into teary blue eyes. Crying isn't going to help, Dobe. God damn it, Sasuke. I love you. I may have never considered you as a lover until you made the first move. But after you started touching me and I put that together with your personality at work and out of the office I realized that you were someone I wanted to be with. For the love of God, I used to have a crush on Sakura-chan. And I hated you because she was infatuated with you. But then she started dating Lee and I just didn't care anymore and I planned to go through my life alone. Then you came and molested me and I've never been so in love with someone before. Silence met him and Naruto began to fidget as Sasuke stared down at the score sheet. Prove it. I Prove that you love me for real and that you're not just using me. It was weird, but somehow Naruto knew this day would come. The day where he was going to have to choose between his job and Sasuke. 
And this time, Sasuke wasn't going to be able to bail him out of making the decision because this time Sasuke was the one forcing him to decide. He always had a plan for this day and he was more than ready to use it. Fine, I quit. Obsidian eyes widened and he looked at Naruto in shock. Wano no, you don't have to. Too late, Sasuke. I quit. I'll have my things cleared out of my office by lunch time. He walked over to the Uchiha and forced him to push his chair back. He straddled the older man's lap and pressed his lips against Sasuke's. It took the Uchiha no time to respond and he began to roam his hands all over Naruto's chest and arms. He couldn't stand not touching Naruto longer than an hour. It just drove him insane. He cupped the blonde's rear, only to have Naruto push against him and abandon his lap. Come to my place after work, Naruto ordered and he left the room slowly, discreetly swinging his hips side to side. After the blonde closed the door behind him, he gaped at the empty cubicle in front of him. W where's Choji? Sekiro looked at him solemnly. He quit. He said the only reason he was even working here was because Shikamaru was here. Naruto found it hard to swallow. So this was it. Due to their game, three people lost their jobs. Well, two of them quit, but it was still because of the game. He ran a hand through his hair and entered his office, looking around slowly. He would miss it here, but everything was turning out for the best right. Two years later, Yuzumaki Naruto groaned as his cell phone continued to vibrate loudly in the pocket of his pants on the floor. He sat up, grimacing slightly, and leaned over the side of the bed to get to his pants. Obsidian eyes watched in amusement as the sheets fell of the other man's tan body, his rear seeming to call to him. Sasuke smirked as he reached a hand forward and poked one of the cheeks. Team, stop it. Naruto mumbled as he finally got to his cell phone, sliding it open. Hello? Sasuke's smirk widened as he stuck his finger into the blonde's tight hole, causing him to groan loudly. And no, sorry Choji. Naruto practically yelled into the phone. Yeah, Sasuke's being an asshole. The Uchiha laid his chest on Naruto's back as he began to slide his finger in and out. I'm not being an asshole. It's my birthday and you said I could do whatever I wanted to you. He could hear Choji chuckling on the other line. Ugh, ignore him. So what's up, Cho? Hey, seriously. Dude, that's awesome. What? Sasuke asked in pure curiosity. His movements paused for the moment. Choji's opening his first restaurant. He wants us to come to the party. When? Thursday at 6 o'clock. That sounds doable. Naruto grinned and returned his attention to the phone. We'll be there man. It's too bad that Lee and Sakura aren't back from their honeymoon. They're gonna be missing out on some great chow. Okay, dude, bye. Naruto closed his phone and dropped it back on top of his pants. Sasuke helped get back on the bed and it wasn't until he turned over onto his back that he realized that Sasuke still had his finger inside of him. He squirmed uncomfortably. Come on, Sasuke aren't you tired yet? Of course not. It's bad enough you passed out on me last time. It's no fun jacking you off when you're unconscious. A bright blush seemed to cover the younger man's entire body. You didn't have to do that. Sasuke chuckled darkly. I would never leave you with an erection, my dear. Don't call me that. It makes me sound like a girl. Two more fingers entered him abruptly, causing him to groan and bite his bottom lip. T-team get some lube. Sasuke looked down at his digits as they appeared and disappeared repeatedly. No, we're doing it dry. Naruto squawked something incomprehensible as the fingers brushed over his prostate. He panted heavily as Sasuke grabbed his right leg and draped it over his shoulder. The Uchiha leaned forward and claimed his lips in a noisy kiss while Naruto came closer and closer to the edge from the relentless fingers. He withdrew his hand from the blonde's hole and sat back. Naruto got the hint immediately and sat up. Getting on all fours he leaned down and took Sasuke's manhood into his mouth without hesitation. Sasuke couldn't but note how eager and bold Naruto was when he did this. He moaned deep in the back of his throat when he felt the head of his cock touch the back of Naruto's throat. He leaned back on the bed and panted as Naruto's miracle of a mouth worked him to the point of no return. Na Naruto s stop he moaned. The blonde lifted his head and licked his lips quickly. Without another word, he got up on his knees and turned around, only to drop onto his chest with his butt raised in the air. He looked back at Sasuke expectantly and wiggled his rear playfully. The raven-haired man smirked and sat up on his knees. He placed one hand on Naruto's shoulder while the other one reached underneath him and grasped his chest. He slowly eased his cock into Naruto's entrance, relishing in the gurgled moan his lover made. Without waiting for the other to adjust, Sasuke pulled most of the way out and plunged back in. Aw, Sasuke. Naruto hissed at how rough it felt, and how good it felt. The friction was more intense and he could feel every move Sasuke made. He pushed his hips back to meet all of Sasuke's thrusts. It wasn't long before Sasuke was pounding Naruto's prostate with each thrust forward. 
He slid his hand from Naruto's shoulder, down his side and onto his stomach until he had a firm grip on the other's cock. He pumped it in time with his furious movements. Njihun Sasuke Sasuke. Sasuke pulled out and roughly flipped Naruto onto his back before he re-entered him. After another minute, Sasuke paused and pulled Naruto up, wrapping his arms around his waist. Naruto pushed Sasuke down to lie on his back and he took over, only lifting off of him about an inch before plunging back down. Mmmmen and Sasuke he moaned when Sasuke began jerking him off again. Their movements became jerky and uncoordinated as the two found themselves close to completion. Sasua, ah. Naruto cried as he shot his seed all over Sasuke's chest. Sasuke followed after him quickly, grunting Naruto's name. Naruto panted and slid off of the older man. Okay five times is my limit. He groaned as he laid down. Sasuke took his spot next to him and kissed the blonde on the neck and then the ear. Well thank you for the lovely birthday present even though you forgot today was my birthday. I said I was sorry. Damn it, I took a half day off of work just to be here with you. I don't like your boss, he's perverted and he's an asshole. Yeah, well at least he's more forgiving than you were. Now I need to go to sleep, I have to get back to the store in three hours. With that, the blonde reached down and pulled the covers over him. Sasuke thought back to the old days when Naruto and his loser friends worked for him. They definitely made the office more interesting. Since he fired Shikamaru, the other four quit soon after. Choji went off and returned to college to learn how to be a chef and run his own food business. After he graduated, he started a catering business and now he's opened his own restaurant. Hiba also went back to college and became a veterinarian. He now works with his sister in one of the largest and most successful animal hospitals in the entire country of Japan. Lee currently owns his own martial arts school for grade school kids. He was labeled as one of the best instructors of all of Kanoha. He was even offered a contract to star in some ninja movie. Naruto is working in a privately owned bookstore where a man who writes porn novels sits in the adult section and researches. Other people have come and taken their places, but they all lack character, which is what Naruto and his gang certainly had if nothing else. But one thing that Sasuke missed the most was doing Naruto in his office. They tried to do it once when Naruto had the day off, but they were interrupted eight times by those new blundering idiots. Naruto got tired of it and he just couldn't get into the mood so he decided to visit everyone in the office. Then he got in a fist fight with Kakashi who was apparently ungrateful, and Sasuke made him go home. Sasuke laid on his back and draped his arm over his eyes. I miss you, Dobe I want you to come back to the office. When he was met with silence, he sighed and turned onto his side, facing away from Naruto. Blue eyes stared at the wall for the longest time before closing slowly. Naruto, it's been so long, Sekura said cheerfully over the phone. Yeah, yeah it has been a very long week since we last spoke. Naruto commented sarcastically as he stretched up on his toes, trying to retrieve a book for a customer. You sound busy as Sasuke doing you right now. I'm at work. He hissed. Right, right. So listen, I have something really important to tell you. What? I'm pregnant. Finally getting a hold of the book, Naruto slipped and fell backwards, the book falling and landing on his crotch. Shit. You're not happy for me. No, I am. I was just hit in the wrong place. Oh, so you are with Sasuke. I'm not with Sasuke. And I'm really happy for you, Sekura. I just pity your kid. What? Why? Because Lee's sperm is probably as backwards as he is. The blonde laughed and hung up, cutting off the endless screaming on the other end. He stood there for a second, staring at his phone. A baby, huh? And that's why we can't do it tonight. Naruto announced proudly, crossing his legs and folding his arms. Because Sakura's having a baby. Sasuke asked incredulously. What? No. Because a book fell on my penis. Sasuke smirked and dropped onto his knees in front of Naruto. Well then, maybe I should have a look at it to make sure there is no damage. He began unbuttoning the blonde's pants, but two hands in his face made him stop. Don't do that. Sasuke growled as he continued to undo the pants anyway. Ha Sasuke. No. Stop it, team. Again no. Temuri, I'm home. Shikamaru called in his normal bored tone as he walked through the door. The blonde-haired woman shot up from the couch and blushed. Um, welcome home. I have a um surprise for you. Shikamaru studied her face and then looked down at the coffee table. His eyes widened comically. Is that a pea stick? Um well, it's normally called a pregnancy test. But yes, it's a pea stick. Temuri frowned. The black-haired man undid his tie and dropped it on the chair next to his briefcase. Have you peed on it? Yes. Damn it, Temery. That's gross. Get it off the table. Temery gaped at him. You unbelievable bastard. 
You don't even care if it's positive or not. Shikamaru grimaced. Oh shit, he made her upset. Um I is it positive? Yes, the couple stood there for a minute in utter silence. Suddenly, Temri found herself in a strong embrace. Oh my god, this is great. He cried, lifting her off the ground and twirling around. He fell forward on the couch so that he was lying on top of her and he pressed his lips against hers roughly. When they parted for air, Temri looked up into his face. She'd never seen her husband like this before. I thought that you thought that kids were a pain in the ass. They are. But I don't mind raising a bunch of pains in the ass as long as I'm raising them with you. Shikamaru said, smiling a genuine smile at her. She frowned and puffed out her cheeks. That was really cheesy. I'm in a cheesy mood. He replied abruptly. He got off of the couch and lifted her bridal style, kissing her softly. Shall we go to our royal chamber, my queen? Temri couldn't hold back the laughter that bubbled in her chest. So this was the end of the series. I hope you enjoyed it. To watch more series like this, subscribe to my channel. Till then, we be offline.